So believe it or not, CNN actually did their job on a very important issue here. That issue is Yemen. They did this once before recently, which is curious, because they never usually do a good job, but here we have two segments where they covered Yemen in a very appropriate way. So this is a, an informative segment. Let's take a look, and then we'll come back and discuss it. A direct strike in broad daylight. Rescuers rush in, but it's too late. It's too graphic to show in full, but the bodies being pulled out belong to three-month-old Samold and her three-year-old brother, Nabil. This cell phone footage was sent to CNN by the rebel Houthi-backed media group Ansar Allah Media, a rare glimpse of life under bombardment in Yemen. Bashar is taking us down through his house. Down, down, to the family's hiding place. This is where the children have been taught to come when they hear the familiar drone of planes overhead. Barat and her family aren't so lucky. They had to improvise. For the last three years, Yemen has been the site of a devastating proxy war, pitting Iranian-backed Houthi militias against a U.S.-backed Saudi-led coalition, seeking to restore the government of overthrown President Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi. In that time, local activist groups have collated data showing an estimated 17,000 aerial strikes as Yemenis attempt some semblance of normal life. These are some of the stories of life under bombardment. On August 9th, the world was aghast when images emerged of schoolboys covered in blood after their bus was hit by a coalition plane. A CNN investigation subsequently identified the 500-pound bomb dropped directly on the bus was supplied by the U.S. to the coalition. We now know that wasn't the first or last incident of civilian deaths using U.S.-made armaments, just the first to hit the headlines in years. Using images collected by award-winning Yemeni activist group Maltanna and independently verified by CNN as having been American-made, CNN has been able to identify at least 11 separate incidents of coalition strikes on civilian areas using U.S.-made armaments. Lockheed Martin during the bus attack, but also Raytheon and the U.S. Air Force Material Command. It is a litany of death made in the USA. And yet the U.S. State Department has certified to Congress that the Saudi-led coalition is undertaking demonstrable actions to reduce the risk of harm and that arms sales to the coalition could continue. When CNN reached out on our findings to the Pentagon, spokeswoman Commander Rebecca Rabarek said it called upon all parties to take all feasible precautions to avoid harmed civilians. The final decisions on the conduct of operations in the campaign are made by the members of the Saudi-led coalition, not the U.S. Many of these weapons were precision-guided. We wanted to see the aftermath for ourselves. CNN was able to send a team to Hacha province. There, our cameraman met 12-year-old Hayal Jarrad. In April, a coalition bomb struck a village wedding. You can see here the moments before the planes arrived, killing 21 people, 11 of them, children. This is part of the missile tail used in the attack. A weapons expert helped CNN trace it back to the US-made GBU-12 bomb manufactured by Raytheon. Hayal was one of the lucky ones. Yahya Madbi will spend his life on crutches, and Hayal's brother was killed. As the team conducts the interviews in the distance, a plane is heard, and the children scatter. Thank you. 
In a rare moment of respite, Barat's little brother is allowed out to play with his friends in the courtyard. Our cameraman asks why he doesn't play in the street. He knows the sound by heart. His cue to run to what safety there is. Well, CNN made repeated requests for comment to U.S. arms manufacturers Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. We have not yet received a response from those companies. If CNN did work like that all the time, I would never bash CNN. That is exactly what the media is supposed to do. Tell truth to power. Explain what's really happening. Give information. And also explain how... Um, the government's responsible for doing various things, and this is an instance of them doing something terrible, and they should be called out for this. So, the part where the children are scared at the sound of the plane and they started scattering, oof. I can't imagine the mindset. Could you imagine being a kid in Yemen growing up, and every time you hear a plane or a drone, that sound... It shakes you to your core because you think you might die, so you have to run to hide. I can't fathom that. I can't fathom that. But this is something that's happened over and over and over and over and over. In fact, you just saw the deaths of children there. At the beginning, they showed um, a strike on what was a civilian area. They showed a house that was attacked, and then there were children who were killed. And they showed that. Okay, so it's important to see that because that's what's happening with your money, your tax money, if you're in the U.S., in your name. And it's actually worse than that because it's not just the U.S. It's, it's, we have Western allies who also arm Saudi Arabia. So it's the West arming Saudi Arabia. And we're aiding in their genocide of Yemen. And yes, I think that's a fair word to use because this is not symmetrical. This isn't too relatively equal forces who are fighting each other. No. It is a massacre. It is a slaughter. You have Saudi Arabia backed by the most powerful military that ever existed, ever, uh, just obliterating civilian populations. For those of you who don't know, they hit mosques, they've hit hospitals, they've hit schools, they've hit open-air markets. And they're doing this on purpose. So it's not, it's not like, whoops, our bad. It's like, okay, seriously, no, go hit the school, go hit the hospital. And then they'll lie about it after the fact. They, oh, no, we would never. Yeah, I'm sure. The same, the same regime that beheads people in the street for apostasy and drug smuggling is the same regime that says, oh, I'm not sure we want to hit this area that might have some civilians. Nonsense. They're doing it on purpose. So the other angle to this story, which I think is very important, is while the arming of Saudi Arabia happened under... George W. Bush, Barack Obama, under Trump, he took over $300,000 from top Saudi officials when they stayed at his hotel. And this is one of the reasons why there's court, uh, there's been court cases over this and they've ruled there's validity to this. It's a violation of the Emoluments Clause for a U.S. president to get money from foreign governments. Why? Because then you have a conflict of interest and you're going to do that government's bidding. So... We've had Saudi officials stay at Trump's hotels. They've given him over $300,000. Why? Did they spend that much? No. It's a bribe. And what did they get in return for that? They got a weapons deal of over $300 billion. So you give me some money. I give you whatever weapons deal you want. I sit idly by while you do a genocide and even help you in facilitating that genocide. This is all so important. Great job, CNN. And I'm telling you guys, whenever I see um, information like this, it reminds me of Noam Chomsky's quote. He says, there's an easy way to stop terrorism. Stop participating in it. You're responsible for what you do. You're responsible for what you do. So the U.S. government is responsible for what it does. And what it's doing is it's helping carry out a genocide in Yemen. So for all the crowing and yelping about human rights and, and we care about altruism and justice and we're the world police, well, if you really want to 
uphold human rights and altruism and justice, and if you really want to do right by the world, here's something you do. Immediately stop arming Saudi Arabia. Um, kick them off the human rights panel at the UN. And uh, also start negotiations with them and consider sanctioning them to prevent them from doing this further. But right now we're not doing that. We're actively facilitating and helping them with their genocide. And it's being hidden. And at the same time we're helping carry out a genocide, these assholes have the nerve to lecture other places like Syria about their human rights records. How about you get your own house in order before you say shit and stop helping carry out a genocide in the process? And it's a genocide that's also facilitated by the corruption of the Trump administration because they took the money at their hotel to give them an even bigger weapons deal. So, now you know the facts. Do with it what you will.